Hi everybody and welcome to another all for sci-fi.com review. I'm Eric Walker and today's review is for Star Wars The Clone Wars Episode 6 which is entitled Dill No Dill. So today we're going to go ahead and uh, get right into it. Uh, we have a couple quick announcements. Wanted to remind everybody, if this is the first time you've visited our channel, please give this video a thumbs up because every like counts and helps us. And please also remember to subscribe to this channel by hitting the subscribe button and also hit the notification bell so that every time we upload a new video, you get notified and you can come and, and watch it. And at right now with this uh, COVID-19 crisis, we're all at home, we're all staying at home right now. So it's my pleasure to come into your homes and give you reviews every week of Clone Wars. And we just did our last re final review for Star Trek Picard, season one, the finale. And next week, we're gonna also do a total recap of the entire season of the Clone Wars, which I'm sure you guys are gonna appreciate. Might have some special guests as well to join us uh, during that recap of the entire season of Star Trek Picard. But we're here to talk about Star Wars, Clone Wars. Of course, my favorite is Star Wars, as you know. Uh, I'm sporting my R2-D2 uh, shirt that I got at the uh, Droid Depot at Galaxy's Edge. And uh, let's go ahead and get into it. Uh, today's um, fortune cookie was, let's see, today's fortune cookie said, uh, mistakes are valuable lessons often learned too late. Wow, what a great fortune cookie. That is so true. Mistakes are valuable lessons for everybody, but yes, they are often learned too late. Okay, so this episode of Clone Wars, uh, at the last episode, we thought Osaka was leaving, like she was done. I thought that that would be the end of this arc, but it's not. The arc is continuing, and in this episode, it starts with, uh, with Osaka and Trace. They're inside uh, working on her ship. Uh, her uh, star cruiser, which uh, she has proudly was able to get on her own, you know, uh, you know, doing odd ends and jobs and stuff. She tells Osaka, you know, this is totally stuff I've paid for for myself. And, um, you know, Trace notices that, you know, Osaka seems to know a lot about fixing even star cruisers. So uh, she says to uh, Osaka... How did you learn so much? What what school did they did they did you go to on the upside? And of course, that has Osaka say, "I went to Skywalker Academy." And Trey says, "I have never heard of Skywalker Academy, but it must be a great school because you know so much." And as they're chatting, she uh, lets us know that she's given her ship a name, and her ship's name is Silver Angel. And uh, Sokka says, Silver Angel, that's uh, not too good of a name. And uh, she then later she says to her, uh, what name would you give my speeder bike? And she says, Trash, <laughs> which uh, gave us some comic relief. Um, then her sister, Rafa, shows up and she lets, uh, lets them know that she has a new job for them. And she first she admits that she hired another star a captain and another star cruiser and another crew and they've bailed on her so now she needs trace her sister to help her of course uh, trace says well thanks for insulting me why didn't you hire me first and, and you know yada yada and um before trey before rafa shows up uh as they're still having their conversation asaka and trace um Trace convinces Asaka to stick around a little bit longer. And then that's when Trace shows up and, and uh, says, uh, what are you guys talking about? And then she tells them about the job. So she won't tell them anything about the job. She's not, uh, she says, I just have a job. You're going to have to decide you're going to go with me and take this job. And you'll learn what the job is when we're on a route. Okay, so she says, okay, we'll go ahead and do the job. And Asaka Decides she's going to go ahead and tag along as well. What choice does she have at this point, right? So they go ahead and get in the ship. Uh, she fires it up. They take off. And as they're leaving Coruscant, 
uh, Asaka notices that Trace is in the wrong lane. She's actually in the military lane, and civilian transport's not supposed to be in that lane. She tells her, you've got to get out of this lane. And, uh, and of course, uh, Rafa says, how do you know that all this stuff? You know, she's starting to wonder, what's going on with Asaka? And in fact, uh, before they took off, uh, uh, Rafa and uh, Ahsoka have a quick little scene, and Rafa is talking to Osaka and saying, what angle are you playing? Are you trying to, uh, you know, what are you going to, what, what are you trying to do? Are you trying to take my sister's ship? Are you trying to hurt us in any way? So she's very protective of her little sister. And she should be with the, the way the Republic is and, it, and the universe at these, during these clone wars. So anyway, back, they're back on the ship. And uh, because they're in the wrong lane, of course, uh, the uh, the um, Star Destroyer uh, makes a call to them, and and uh, the, of course uh, Trace wants to answer it right away. And Osaka says, "Don't answer that! Don't answer that!" Uh, you know, and and uh, she answers it anyway. And she says, uh, "Silver," she calls it "Silver Angel" here. Uh, and of course, it's some sort of a general or commander that says. You're not supposed to be in these lanes. Uh, what are you doing in these lanes? You know, you better get out. You know, I'll have your pilot license. And Trace says, you need a pilot license for this? Like, she's so green, she doesn't know. She's such a rookie. Uh, she's probably, this is probably the first time she's ever flown a Star Cruiser. Um, so uh, as they're doing this, uh, we see Anakin Skywalker. And the general asks uh, Anakin, uh, or the commander, I, I'm not sure that they said it, who, who he was. Um, he asked uh, General Skywalker, do you want, I was about ready to, uh, you know, have them arrested. What should I do? And Anakin senses that Ahsoka, Ahsoka, excuse me, Ahsoka is in the transport, is in the Silver Angel. So he, and you could see they have this little force moment where you could tell they connect and even Ahsoka, I could sense Anakin's in that ship as well. But uh, Anakin says, no, go ahead and let them go. They're nobody. And he knows Ahsoka's in that ship. So they let him go. Um, they go ahead and they get up into uh, above Coruscant. And, uh, okay, so now Rafi, uh, go, they, she goes ahead and tells her sister, but she whispers where they're going. So we don't know where they're going yet. And she puts in the coordinates where their mission is. So they go ahead and hit light speed. And as they're... You know, traveling through light speed to their mission, which we don't know where it is at this point. Um, we find out that Trace uh, forgot to take off the air brakes. That's <laughs> such a rookie. So she hits it, and then it gets a little smoother because it was jumping a little bit too much in uh, hyperspace. So they arrive, and Ahsoka immediately can tell that they're at Kessel. So shades of Solo, the movie Solo. So, except for, they don't go to the spice mines on Kessel. They go to where uh, the king and the Ruba family is, where their palace is. It's very green. It's very lush. It's beautiful. It doesn't even look like Kessel. Uh, that, well, Kessel that we, we've never seen this part of, uh, of Kessel. So, their job is to run spice for the, for the king Aruba and the Ruba family. Uh, they meet, uh, as they uh, land on the transport, they're greeted by uh, a whole armor a battalion and uh, Kanush Locke, who speaks for the Aruba family, says they have this banquet in their honor. And, of course, Rafa is going, oh, we've hit the big time now. You know, they're going to have a banquet for us. So they go and they have, a, they have this banquet and uh, they eat. And they now they find, this is where Ahsoka finds out that they're going to be running spice, and and um, she calls it medicine. I guess spice could be used as medicine for medicinal purposes as well. Didn't know that. Something new I learned. So they go ahead and uh, accept the mission, and they go. They fly over to where the spice mines are, and Trace notices that there's all these uh, bot, you know, droids around, and but they're not droids. Ahsoka says, "No, those are." human beings and they probably are slaves so they pick up the spice and they head off 
and uh, they're on their mission to deliver the spice. And uh, while they're doing that, Rafa says who they're delivering it, delivering the spice to. She says, she slips up and says, uh, Mar, Mar Krim better have my money. So immediately this sets Ahsoka off and says, wait a minute, we're delivering this spice to the Pikes? And she starts flipping out and telling, you know, uh, you know, Trace and, and uh, of course, Rafa that this is the biggest crime syndicate the, the biggest gangsters in the entire galaxy, the Pikes, do you know what they're doing? They won't, not, they won't, won't, this is not a simple mission. We'll be lucky if they don't, you know, kill us, take our ship, take the spice. And of course, this gets Trace all excited and saying, wait a minute, they're going to take my ship, my silver angel. And she's all upset about this. And, and, uh, yeah, and uh, Ahsoka, and of course, Rafa is, is saying, how do you know so much about, everything you know why do you know so much about uh, the pikes and this who they are and uh, you know and trace is still getting even more fired up and, and says to ahsoka is it like this other uh, gangster on coruscant she goes no that's a local crime lord this is like galactic you know gangsters that's like way worse and it sets trace off so much that she walks over and she hit she lifts the, the thing and hits and hits the button and, and Gets rid of the entire cargo. She shoots the spice into hyperspace and says, there, I solved the problem. And they're saying, what did you do? What did you do? Well, I got rid of the spice, so now they can't take my ship. And of course, us, this gets Rafa really, really, really upset and says, you shouldn't have done that. And for once, even Ahsoka agrees with Rafa for the first time. She says, I agree with her. You got to have something you know, this was a bad situation, but now if you don't have anything, they're going to take your ship, they're going to take kill us, and whatever. You, they still got to get paid. Uh, you know, you, when you take a mission, you got to complete it. And, of course, Roth is really upset at, at, her, at her little sister, uh, Trace, and, and um, you know, says, you know, what are we going to do? You know, you just dumped 30,000 credits out. And so Ahsoka says, oh, we got to come up with a plan. And uh, so they're thinking about a plan to, to, to do this. And um, what are they going to do? How are they going to get by and now that they don't have the spice any longer? Um, spice is kind of, a, it could be used as a drug. It could be used for, I, I guess, a coaxium for fuel. It could be used for medicinal purposes. But it's kind of like also a, a drug. And uh, I was uh, on Facebook and I noticed one of my friends on Facebook uh, made a point about this episode, and his name is uh, Din. And hi, Din, if you happen to catch this. He made a good point. He said, Star Wars is not a place to have the stereotypical things in society that are racist. And, and he called out Star Wars this episode, and I don't think it was intentional, but the Martez sisters, you know, Rafa and Trace Martez, it seems to me like they're Hispanic. They seem like they're Hispanic or Latino. They're of that heritage. And for them now to be dealing with in drugs, illegal drugs or illegal spice, it kind of, uh, I got your point. And I kind of agree with Din. Uh, Star Wars, we, you know, even though it's a small point here, we shouldn't, you know, try to lead into the stereotypical uh, all Latinos deal drugs type of thing. So I get your point there, Dan, and I agree with it. Uh, Star Wars, we got to be better than that. It's not. I'm not going to go on about it because I went on about it long enough. It's just a little point, and uh, that I wanted to point out. Also, Ahsoka, to me in this episode, just seems to be a little bit too whiny. You know, uh, to the point where it kind of it made me notice that she's complaining so much. Um, I don't like that part of Ahsoka's character. Um, I love the character, but I don't like her that much in this episode. Uh, speaking of that, I didn't get it. I got so excited and got into this episode without giving it a rating. So let's go ahead and give the official All for Sci-Fi rating of this episode. At All for Sci-Fi, we have a rating system of zero to five stars, five stars being the best, of course. This episode, um, I'm going to go ahead and give it four stars. So you got four stars. 
And I only downgraded it a little bit because of two factors. Uh, the running of illegal drugs, you know, and it being the Martez sisters, that bothered me a little bit. Also, Ahsoka's character being a little bit too whiny. Other than that, I understand it, and it's the second part of this, uh, this story arc. Yeah, there wasn't very much action in this episode, um, but what's going to happen in the next episode probably will make up for it. So let's continue with this uh, recap of, of this episode. So now that they're traveling to, uh, to deal with the Pikes, um, Ahsoka has a plan. She doesn't tell them what the plan is. She says, just follow along. Uh, when they show up there, uh, they go out and they meet uh, the head of the Pikes. And guess what? Ahsoka uses the power of the Force. She uses mind control. And she tells the leader that he doesn't need to look inside the containers, uh, that he could just give them the credits and they can move along. And that was a cool moment to have uh, that uh, often used now. Uh, part of uh, the force where they could uh, use mind control. And as they're leaving, and of course the, the head of the pike says, yeah, go ahead, you could go, I don't need to look at it, <laughs> take your credits. As they're leaving, they're of course trying to hurry. Another one of the one of the assistants says, no, we need to check things out. And the, the head guy goes, okay, if you must. So as they're leaving, the guy does end up looking inside and seeing that nothing's in, con in the containers. So they're trying to scramble and hurry up and get away and they, they they get they close the door and hatch and they start to take off and then suddenly you know because the guy discovered nothing was there he already radioed to have them stop so other ships pop up and and uh, Trey says oh I could get aware around these these uh, ships so we could outrun these ships but they hit the tractor beam and they caught the silver angel in a tractor beam now they're stuck what's gonna happen. Bam, the episode ends. So it ends on a cliffhanger. That part I liked. I liked the I liked how they end on the cliffhanger. Um, it, 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 it's it's going to make for next week's episode to be interesting. I'm hoping to see a lot more action. I'm hoping to see Ahsoka uh, get that lightsaber out and uh, you know maybe show the sisters that she might be a Jedi by this next episode. I do get that uh, in, in any story arc, you always have a beginning, middle, and end. I don't know where we're at in this story arc. Um, I thought it ended in the last one, and it was just one quick one, but it didn't. So we're still here with the sisters and Ahsoka, one of my favorite characters uh, of all time. And we'll see what happens next week. Well, thank you guys for joining me for this quick review of Star Wars Clone Wars Episode Six deal no deal and as i mentioned it it's going to get four stars from us here i think you guys should watch it it might prove to be a very important episode later it did have a few shortcomings that's why i gave it four stars as i had mentioned but again everybody please if this is the first time you come to our channel please hit the thumbs up give this video a like as i mentioned it helps us and be sure to subscribe to this channel guys hit the subscription button and hit the notification bell. As I've mentioned in the last couple of videos, I'm gonna be doing a lot more videos. Last year, I went all over Disneyland, took a lot more footage. I interviewed a, a lot of Star Wars actors. I interviewed Mike Quinn. I interviewed Dominic Pace and a few others in Dallas when we were at the Rise of Skywalker premiere there in Dallas. So I'm gonna go ahead and start working on editing those videos. So we got a lot of stuff that's gonna come out. I hope you guys enjoy it. I'm Eric Walker saying, may the force be with you.